So these are the two different options that you can decide on which might be best for you. I personally went with all of these because when I was buying them all online, the only option to buy uh, 400 of was this size. Although this size definitely has a great use and purpose. But let's go over the one that I currently use for all of my juveniles and very small adults. So the dimensions on this, I believe, are six inches wide, which I know is very narrow. But if you look at most reptile breeding facilities with snakes or with other types of geckos that are more terrestrial, that's pretty common because of how much you can optimize your space, right? In this building, I have about 800 square feet and very quickly it's already filled up. And if I only had these adult tubs that are on my right here, which are a whole foot wide, because of that small amount of horizontal space you save, really exponentially grows. These are, however, what? Is that not at all? Not at all how it works, it's just half. Six is half of 12, so you just have double the amount. Whatever, <laughs> I'm stupid. So what they lack in width, they greatly make up for in depth, as you can see. Keep in mind, these are for geckos that are relatively 15 to 20 grams all the way up to about 30, where they're upgraded then to an adult enclosure. What I love about these types of tubs is their ability to slide out without a lid. So there's no need for you to take out and unstack all of your bins and then take out all the lids and then do all the stuff with the geckos, then put all the lids back on and then stack them all up again. There's no need for that with this system. And what's great is you simply need to pinch the top a little bit and then you can take the whole tub out. And now we can really look at what's inside. So you can see it is extremely narrow. However, it's very tall and very long. Put a mesh screen on the front and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to put a crested gecko in here. This is essentially a rather minimalist or breeder setup. We have two things for them to climb on. We have leaves for them to hide in, paper towel substrate so that we can throw red runners in there and we don't have to worry about them getting impacted from soil. And the ledges that we're using for this specific enclosure are from C3 Ledges. They make the highest quality gecko ledges in the industry. Quite literally, I have never ever dealt with anything as high quality as these. All of these ledges will come with exact magnets that you'll need and they're super strong. I have opted to get much thinner magnets. They're a bit weaker, but they work perfectly with this setup so that I don't knock them off whenever I'm opening and closing the enclosure. But most of you guys probably use glass aquariums or just normal tubs and don't have this specific rack system. So the magnets that come with those are gonna work perfectly. But this isn't sponsored or anything. I would highly recommend this product though. So you might be wondering how on earth are you supposed to get paper towels that even work with this, might as well use substrate, which I have been testing. But if you get the brawny specific quarter sheet paper towels, they work perfectly. So all that I do is I break off a three roll and then you can just break that down the middle. And if you just go along a flat surface, now you have two paper towel sheets that fit flawlessly in these exact enclosures. This is another size that I've been experimenting with and this would be much more preferable for say, 12 to 15 grams up to about 20 grams. Past that, then I would say this is a little bit too small only because it is only six inches wide and eight inches tall. It's still 18 inches deep, so it is still a substantial amount of space. I would say that this is quite the upgrade from a six quart tub, which we all know and love, but eventually you're gonna have to just go to these other ones that we've been talking about. So that's why I've just decided to keep them in the six quarts up until about 15 to 20 grams. Then I switch them over to the full on tall narrows, which I really prefer over this, just because you're gonna have to get like 200 of these and then another three or 400 of these. You might as well just get 600 of the bigger ones and then transfer them over a little bit later. But if you are a smaller breeder and you only have like 50 or so geckos and you want them to have a perfectly appropriately sized enclosure for each stage of their life, I couldn't recommend this size anymore. And it's built the exact same way. You can take these out really easily. It's the exact same dimensions other than height and you can set them up the exact same way and you'll have a happy and healthy gecko in the end. If you get some PVC or irrigation insulation, uh, these are essentially pool noodles, but they have a super wide diameter on the inside. So no gecko is gonna go in there and choke or anything or suffocate, completely open. And I treat this as a hide. So if you cut this to an exact length, you can actually use it as a hide in there. Not only is it now going to be a branch that the gecko can climb on, but it's also a hide and you can actually see on the inside whenever you pull it out. So you can check if the gecko's in there and you can still easily pull it out if you need to clean it and everything because it's insulation. So it's very flexible and it comes out really easy to be cleaned. These are really cheap too. You can get like a six or 10 foot pool noodle for roughly eight to $10. And then you can cut it up into these six and a half inch pieces 
over and over and over again, whatever the math is, you can get a lot for your money. Really easy to clean. All you need to do is get a scrub daddy with some simple green, scrub off the poop. Bob's your uncle. You got a brand new, perfectly clean little branch and hidey hole. And I just think that it works really well. It's super cheap. You can move it around no problem. And you can even do multiple as many as you want in order to give your gecko as much climbing space as you want. Here are some examples of how I'm using these to keep my juvenile to sub-adult crested geckos. And you can see this is about a 20 gram gecko in this tub right here. You know, they still have plenty of space to hide, plenty of things to climb on. This being a more simple way of setting it up with the C3 ledges, and then these being the more DIY setups with the mushroom ledges, the PVC some plants in order for them to feel comfortable. I am testing out using this cocoa fiber on a couple of them. It seems to be really good, but if you want to be able to throw bugs in, I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with the brawny paper towels. But once you have some sub-adults in here that don't really like eating bugs anymore, this is a fantastic option I've found. And especially if you are good at making cultures of isopods, then this would be a great option. The fact that these are all self-contained and can all close and open really easily with literally my fingertips, what more could you ask for? I wanna compare the size of full-grown adult crested geckos in these enclosures. Cowboy is a 45, 42 gram male, and this is him in these enclosures. It's a little small, but for a full-grown crested gecko, that's just showing you how big these enclosures are. And to even emphasize this point further, here is thick. My absolute largest badonkadonk honky tonk 86 gram behemoth of a crested gecko. But as you can see, compared to having a small juvenile in one of these, it is plenty of space. So if you guys are at all interested in getting some of these, I wish I could say that I was sponsored, but I'm not. These are called tall, narrow, like it, stackable drawers on the Container Store's website. These are specifically in the smoke color. You can get them in white and you can also get them in not transparent, although I would recommend getting them transparent. I've done a couple of tests on how much light really gets in there. And once you have the hole in the front, it doesn't really matter which color you get. Light is still going to get in there. So as long as you have ambient light in the room, either from windows or from a light that you have on a timer, they're still going to be able to get a full day and night cycle, whether you use this darker version or the white one. However, using this darker version doesn't look as dirty as easily. Using the white ones, literally anything that the gecko does in there immediately it looks kind of gross and just dirty but you know maybe you want that so that you can see what really needs to be cleaned however for aesthetic reasons i like this color a little bit better the downside is that on cameras it does look way bluer than it actually is it's much more of a muted gray in person but on camera i have to desaturate it a bit but only like three of you guys are going to care about that if you're interested in the ledges that I used, those are also going to be linked down below. Couldn't recommend them anymore by C3 Ledges, and they also do wholesale discounts if you buy multiple. Comment down below if you guys think that you're going to start using these in your collections. I have found a lot of success with them, and I hope that you guys do too. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that YouTube mumbo jumbo, and I'll see you guys in the next video.